So when you're doing things in your mind, when you're putting together property and you present it to an investor, what is it that you look at for, let's start off on a cash on cash return. Like what type of cap rates do you envision or most of your investors look for in the Cleveland area? Or what are the realistic numbers for cash on cash? And then I know how to use leverage from there. I think there's two different like questions or schools of thought there. Like mm -hmm. you have to balance some things, right? Like you'd be like, yo, I want to hit these numbers, right? So you'd be like, okay, these are the kind of numbers I want to hit, right? No, but I then, blend them. I'm going to blend them. I know. Yeah. Then there's what the market is producing. So you're like, yo, these, this is, this is what I want to do, bro. And I'll take, take that information from you. And I'd be like, okay, bro, how about this particular property? This is how it would play out. This would be the closest to what you're, you're into. Right. And a lot of, a lot of that stuff too, is going over different asset classes with people. Right. Cause people will give me like their, their on paper projections and their numbers. And they'll be like, but I also want to be in like a B grade neighborhood. And I'd be like, okay, well, to actually find yourself a property that you can generate that rent for that little of a price, you're actually going to be something like this. And just so you know, this is how it all play out. And this is like a D or an F grade neighborhood. So it's up to you if you want, if you want to make the move. Right. So it's, you know, I can't make shit appear on the market. That's not there. Right. No, no, it's no, I know. really I mean, about uh, just like you tell me what you want and I show you what the closest thing that's available to that is, or at the same time, I'll show you a property. I'm like, you know, this is like the exact kind of property you want, but the seller, they want 120 K. If you want to have your numbers uh, work the way you want it, you'd have to offer them 90. My man, Manny, what's up, brother? Um, first and foremost, um, I got this uh, document, Hold Harmless uh, yeah. Agreement. All right. And then uh, they said that there's going to be some videos being taken. I I'm not looking to be on a show. Uh, I've been doing this for a long time. You know, walk, rinse, repeat, you know, single family rentals. I wanted to talk to you. And the only way they would allow me to talk to you was to obviously pay $799, which I've never done in my friggin' life, but I, I, I'll play the game. But I really don't, there's some sense of things that I may be talking about, and I don't want this out of there. It's that, and, you know, I'm, I'm very upfront. Well, what we could do is we could, uh, I'll have Tom cover up your, your video feed, but the audio will be on the show. Well, there's things on the audio that, I, that I'm saying. That's, what, that's why I was a little confused. I didn't know this was a show or something like this. I thought this was a, you know, one-on-one -on -one conversation with you that we can talk about how I can buy properties, you know, talk to you about property management, what you guys do, um, and, and if we can work together. But, you know, again, let's let's get started. I just had to say what I got to say, because I really don't want uh, what, what I talk about on the show. I mean, the whole conversation is going to be recorded, and the whole conversation is going to go on the show. So if you want, we can cover up your face. And your name's not in the show, but, you know, if you're talking about something that's so bad, you don't want on the show. That's not so bad, but listen. Maybe I mean, you shouldn't be talking about it. No, it's not. No, no there's nothing. I, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm above board. I've done, I've bought over 500 houses in Atlanta, excuse me, in Orlando, I've done SFR, gutted them, re-rented them, sold them to hedge funds as portfolios. I just, we just sold off a 288 unit single, fat, you know, multifamily in Lakeland. So I'm I'm entering into the let's call it the Ohio area into uh, uh, into this into this area. So as I'm doing my research, your company came up. Very interesting. It's great what you do. I love it. You got a great, great, great stick. Well, you know, one of the reasons I was talking to you is that one is um i wanted to see what more your company could offer than just being a regular broker and sh showing me listings whether what you know property management and if and anything that you can do with some of the contractors or do i just go out and get my own contractor teams like we did in the past and build them to do all of the rehab work so you know those are some of the things that i wanted to talk about today and that's it and let's you know let's let's get it let's get it going yeah, uh, we could talk about, like I said, bro, we could talk about anything you want. Um, it's totally up to you. We, you know, just 
you ask questions, I'm an open book. Uh, I'll give you any, 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 any info or insight I can. I'll walk you through the whole process, whatever you want to do. Uh, but again, I just want to make sure we're on the same page. Like I said, the whole show is recorded. The whole show will be published on Home Watch TV. It is, it is what it is. Okay. I just, I was just not, that's not what I thought I signed up for, but that's okay. All right, cool. Well, now that we're on the same page, dog, hit me, man. What, what, what do you got? What do you want to talk about first? We could talk about anything you want. Um, so let's talk about Youngston, Youngston, uh, adjoining areas like say Warren and Trumbull County and stuff like that. What's the, you know, the market looking like in those, in those areas right now, because those, those have been brought to my attention. Um, I know the Cleveland market a little, uh, uh, you know, Ohio, again, we, we have not entered, our team has not gone into Ohio. We're very, very centric in, in, like I said, Orlando, and we were very centric in Miami, and we were very centric in, like, in the Atlanta region. All um, right. Well, I would say, so let me piggyback off of that to answer a couple other questions that I feel like kind of relate to what you were saying earlier about like what we could do for you. Right. Versus like what, like a traditional broker will do for you. So uh, Holton wise in general, uh, we offer like a varying level of services, all of which would be like a la carte. Right. So it's like, you're going to a, you know, a fucking buffet, right. You want to get the fried chicken, you get the fried chicken. You want the soft serve ice cream, you get the soft serve ice cream. You want the pasta, you get the pasta, but you don't got to get all of it. You pick and choose. So, and it's going to uh, depend and vary based on like the market too. So uh, our management office, right. Uh, like where we're actually physically located is in the Cleveland market. We're in a suburb called Parma, which is like across the street from the border of Cleveland. Right. So if you're in or doing business in, for instance, like all, all the surrounding suburbs of Cleveland. Uh, so like Cleveland is in a County called Cuyahoga County. Mm -hmm. And then there's five, five, five counties that surround it. Right. So Cleveland itself, and then any of the five counties that surround it, uh, Holton Wise, we can do uh, the video consulting. We could do representing you as your broker. We can do full service property management, full service construction. So you wouldn't have to build your own team. We would provide everything top to bottom, whether it's, you know, replacing a toilet, replacing a roof, driveway, everything. We do it all. It's full service. And then we also do uh, property insurance. I'm an insurance broker as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but then when you stretch out further than that, right? Uh, so like when you get into Warren, Trumbull County, Youngstown, Toledo, uh, our services will be limited a little bit in scope. Uh, we'll be able to still consulting, insurance anywhere in Ohio, sell you anything in Ohio, consult with you on anything in Ohio. But our physical boots on the ground services with the property management, full service property management and the constructions. We don't do those uh, in the outside and it has nothing to do with like specifically what's happening in those cities. It's just, you know, geographically. No, I, I get that. I mean, you're located, yeah. right? And I know, and I'd rather, I'd rather have honesty. I don't, I don't mind buying from you all day long. I just, yeah. we have a problem. Just so you know, you know, we were, my team and my partner was the guy who created SFR for Blackstone and Colony Capital and, and companies like that. And, you know, keys to cash in the old days, they, that's, a, that, that's an old story. So we did, a, at one point, we did the first 400 houses that we did in Orlando. It, it was basically that model. We, we would buy a house. We would literally close on August 1st on the house. The day that it closed, you know, we had a crew in there. We, we gutted it out. We literally rehab the entire house. We would have, we have teams of contractors. We would deliver the materials. They would put everything in place. And our goal was, we used to have a saying from close to pillow, someone's head in a pillow. We try to be in a, under 45 days. That was our goal all the time. And on, that, and on average, we were, and we motivated our contractors to do that. So I want to enter, you know, the Youngstown market was what was brought to me. I understand I have friends that are in the Cleveland market. Um, I'm looking at the Youngstown market because of some of the opportunities that have been handed to me. I will use you all day long to buy and be my broker, but I'm going to have to ha find, you know, and maybe that's where you can help me. I'm going to have to find a, a property management company that I can rely on in, in that area. 
and then I'm going to need uh, construction crews that I can assemble or companies. And a lot of it, I can do either, either way, either I'll buy all the material and just deliver it to the job site, or you just give me the whole scope of work and I'll just tell you exactly what it is, but you know, either, or I can do. Well, yeah, but for Youngstown, we can't offer you contracting services and property management services. That's what I'm saying. No, I know that. So, yeah. but if you know somebody, if you can refer me to that, you know, to two way street, I'll continue, I'll buy properties in Youngstown. I know you guys do listings in Youngstown. I'll use you as my purchasing broker. And then what I'll do is as I'm building in Youngstown, if I say we're going to do two, three, 400 houses in Youngstown, then I'll go out and I'll, you know, I'll do some in the Cleveland market. You know, I've run some of the numbers on, I've modeled out some of the Cleveland numbers, you know, they come out really good. So I'm, I'm not going to say no to Cleveland. Well, and I'm, I'm not trying to uh, push you to Cleveland versus Youngstown either. I mean, it, it, you know, it doesn't matter to me. I'm here to provide you with, you know, in, information and transparency uh, on what I can do, what I can offer for every market. So like, if you want to, you know, move, you know, move into Youngstown, that's where you want to attack. Like, don't think that I'm like, oh, dude, let's do Cleveland instead, just because I offer uh, a larger array of services. It's 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 irrelevant to me. I, I guess so, I guess yeah, that. I wouldn't I mean, be I wouldn't be swaying you. I just want to, you know, you know, you specifically asked me like what specifically my company could do. I just want to make sure I'm clear to you, setting the right expectations of you know, what services I can and cannot provide and what I can and cannot control. So like in Youngstown, for instance, right? Like, yeah, we'll kick you referrals. We'll, we'll shoot you a list of referrals uh, of a few people that are doing business down there that we think are decent, but I have no control over them, right? You know, so, I know, but I, and, and, I, yeah. and I don't, we're, we're, big, we're big boys. I, I, I would yeah. never hold that again. I know it's a referral, um, you know, same thing. So let, let's talk Cleveland then. Let's just talk, talk for a couple of minutes. Let's talk Cleveland. So on average, you know, one of the things I see when you do your videos, you you know, you put up market values, right? And, you know, um, are you getting those market values? Are you referring to Section 8 voucher numbers or are you uh, coming up with those numbers based off of, you know, values that are uh, that you're seeing out there right now and you're, you're, you're coming up with that number? Like, let's start off with that. I, where do those numbers come from? Uh, well, so I, uh, Holton Wise, we are like the biggest name in the game in the Cleveland market. We run a $75 million portfolio uh, and I've sold $200 million worth of rentals. That's all we do. Right. So like if say for some fucking crazy reason, right, you move to Cleveland and you're like, yo, me and the old lady, we're going to buy like a $2 million home in the suburbs. Can you help us buy it? You know, the answer would be no. Like we don't do that. Right. Like we, 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 we don't partake in that business. So all I do is rentals. Uh, so when I give uh, the market rent valuations, it's going to be based upon like our personal experience of like sure, okay. running our portfolio. Uh, but like, for example, um, I, I'm, I'm a firm believer that if you're going to be in a neighborhood that is what I would consider like a D or like a low C class, a low income neighborhood, uh, that section A is going to be a much lower risk uh, way to operate your portfolio. It's like one of the only ways to consistently collect that rent when you're in like the, the ghetto essentially. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. So what I'm giving my, um, fair market quotes, right, is probably going to be uh, what I believe we'll achieve when we're offering it to both cash and Section 8, but most likely going with the Section 8 tenant. Whereas if we were in like, a, you know, like a super high end suburb where like 98 percent of the homes are owner occupied uh, and we decided, you know, you decide you want to rental properties in there, like you wanted to hold them for like seven years or something and then sell them if the market were to go up or something. In a scenario like that, I think you'd be bat fucking shit crazy to put a Section 8 tenant in a property like that. Yeah, no, so, I agree with you. Yeah, so the, the market rent I'll give you would be what I believe a, you know, qualified 750, 700 plus credit score individual that would qualify to live there would pay cash. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's all based off personal experience. Uh, I wouldn't just go off of like what uh, the individual housing authority is going to say. And additionally, like when you go to the housing authority websites, right? Like, like for instance, CMHA, that's who runs the, the Cleveland housing authority for the section mm -hmm. eight out here. Like they list, and I put it on our FAC. It's on our FAC. It's on HoltonWise.com. We have a whole section eight FAC. Uh, and I, they, they list what they'll pay uh, for one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom, four yeah, bedroom. Yeah, I see, I see that. Yeah. But yeah. that number's not what they pay. They don't, they don't just pay. I don't, I don't know why they created that thing. And like, we try to, you know, surround that chart with like 
this is what the chart says, but this is not exactly what they do. Bring that up again. So you're saying that I'll give you an example. So in uh, let's use a real world example. So in in the charts uh, that I produce are, are oh, what okay, they, okay, no, no, no. Okay, no, the okay. charts that I produce are what they are typically going to pay. But I'm telling you, like if you went to the CMHA website and I put their chart on my fact to explain how this process all works, like they're telling you what they'll pay. Uh, I'd pull it up right now. Actually, that'd probably be easier. So like they're telling you like what they typically pay uh, for a voucher, but this is not what actually happens in the real world. So it's that's what, that's what I'm saying. So in a voucher, let's use an example. Youngstown, right? We they, we our team sat down with them, and as an example, their vouchers: uh, six hundred two for a studio, six sixty four for a one bedroom, eight thirty four for a two, eleven oh three for a three. So you're telling me that even though they're saying that that that's what they would pay in a voucher, they may differentiate from that. They may, may yes, exactly. Uh, what those numbers you just gave me are fairly close, uh, to what you'll see, but you're going to see something a little bit different every single time. Uh, and like what you'll see too, is they're going to go based off like the actual square footage, depending on, uh, the actual neighborhood. But dude, I, I have apartment buildings on the same street right next to each other. And I've, I've received bids, uh, for like identical apartments right next to each other of varying amounts. So you have to understand when you work with, I mean, you know, you're not a fucking rookie, so you probably, well, I don't know. I don't know if you probably weren't doing section eight though, down in Florida. No, I mean, I think we didn't do section yeah. eight. Okay. So we have to... so this section eight in this air, section eight is a little bit different. Listen, I got friends who are billionaires doing section eight, you know, ex baseball players and friends of mine that are, you know, one of my buddies got 7,000 units. But uh, that's that's a different story, and he's completely Section Eight. Um, I personally like Section Eight quite a bit. Okay, I, and I'm telling you that I'm going to love Section Eight because of the fact that it gets rid of a lot of other things. I and by the way, two things: Are you this? I know you're recording this. Am I going to get a copy of this or link to this? It's going to be on Holton Wise TV. So yes. Okay. But I'm going to cover up your face because it sounds like you want us to do that. Yeah. So we'll cover up your face, but you'll get the audio. But like, uh, can you clearly see this? I pulled up like the chart. Can you clearly see that on your uh, computer screen? I can't. I'm trying to right, zoom. Uh -huh. What about now? Yeah, I can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like, I got this whole Section 8 fact, and uh, this is on HoltonWise.com. And this, like, it goes over, like, how it is dealing with CMHA. And we deal with, obviously, varying... Uh, authorities right like there's a different one in lorraine there's a different one in akron i don't personally handle day-to-day -day management for anybody in youngstown but more or less uh there, there's this very similar pattern to how all these housing authorities work and you know obviously you're new to section eight but you're not new to the business you're not new to investing and you seem like a savvy guy and i'm sure you're aware that anytime you're dealing with the government it's a little fucked up right so <laughs> I got a HUD yeah. loan. My 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 multi my my multifamily down in Lakeland, Florida. Yeah, it was a HUD loan. You know how long it took me to get a HUD construction loan? Yeah, I think like probably years, right? Probably uh, you're close. It took us about 17, 18 months. Yeah, so it's nuts, right? So, like specifically for like Youngstown too, right? Like Youngstown in Florida, bro. They're not gonna be different right like i got married in florida right i got married down in uh fort lauderdale right and uh i just recently was down in Cocoa beach for a vacation right and when you are hanging out in florida you're driving down the street in florida dude you see cranes and, and brand new construction everywhere right you ain't gonna see that in youngstown right youngstown is definitely gonna be a very uh depressed economic situation compared to what you're seeing in florida uh but you can buy properties for incredibly cheap. And then when you go to rent them, you got to go with the Section 8 program, right? Or else you're not going to be able to consistently collect your rents, right? So I do love Section 8. And honestly, like what most people are attracted to when they come and work with us, you know, you guys are mostly looking to buy properties for like, you know, say like a something that most people are really interested in would be like a duplex that, you know, you could buy have renovated, have Section 8 rent ready, and you're all in for like around 100, 
and you're bringing in around like 16, 17, 1800 a month, right? Those are like the numbers that most people are attracted to and coming here, which is all well and good, which is all great. But what, what, I, what I think my, my real role and my, the real value proposition that I provide to people like you is like, I just want to make sure you know exactly what you're going to get, right? So like when you're dealing with the housing authority, like they put up these charts, it's like, yeah, it should be about what we're going to pay. But then in reality, that's not how it goes. It's not like, oh, you got a two bedroom. Oh, it's going to be 892. That's not how it works. The way it works is like the tenant, they're approved. They have a two bedroom voucher. And then you fill out a bunch of paperwork with said tenant. And then the housing authority is going to send somebody out to the property. They do their inspection and then they give you a bid. Okay. Uh, but the bids, it's if there's like a specific exact formula that they're uh, legitimately using and it's it's uniformed, I haven't noticed what that pattern is because sometimes the numbers are going to be wacky. And here's the thing too, you got to understand. So like the moral of the story though is, is, is really like, it's kind of a bumpy road to get from you're done with your reno, you found a tenant who wants to use the voucher to actually getting them into your unit. Once you get them into your unit, you're smooth sailing, but it's a bumpy road to get there, right? So you'll go through the process where they get, give you the bid, but they'll also inspect it and they might issue violations, violations for very minor things. So say they issue like four little violations before they'll release payment for that tenant and they'll let you move that tenant in and they'll agree to pay for that tenant. You got to fix those violations, call them back out to have them go ahead and- uh, uh, well, are you, When you say violations, James. It's, it's, it's always ticky tack stuff, right? Uh, and they'll do this annually too, just so you know. So like every year they'll come back out to your property and they'll do ticky tack stuff, right? Like I remember one unit, uh, just off the top of my head, right? It was like, you know, uh, this wall needs repainted because it's all dirty and grimy. There's two cracked tiles uh, in the kitchen. Those need to re be replaced, stuff like that, right? Little minor ticky tack stuff. Uh, so you'll get those minor ticky tack items uh, and then you'll have to fix them and then they'll send somebody back out to inspect it. But here's the th thing. And this has happened before and it will happen to you. <laughs> like we've gone through processes where somebody comes out and they're like, all right, you got four violations. We clear those four violations. And then when they send somebody back uh, to see that those four violations are clear, that person will issue a completely different violation. Yeah, than the, first, the first fucking guy didn't issue. Right. So you will get that stuff. And uh, the process of getting them from like, the tenant's like, yeah, man, I want to rock and roll to actually getting them in there, collecting your first month's rent. It usually is like a 60 to 90 day process is really what it takes uh, typically. And then annually, they will come back every single year and uh, you'll have to have them inspect your unit. And typically every year they're going to issue some type of violation, something they want you to fix. So, so, it sounds like to me that these lot of violations have a lot to do with, con with the conditions. So what happens if, for example, um, you know, let's look at, I got a spreadsheet of, uh, uh, let's look at one of your listings here, right? Uh, uh, where is this one? Parkview, 1110 Parkview in Youngstown, right? Three units, three bedroom, two bedroom, one bedroom, 64.9, right? Okay. So if that if that if that unit was completely gut renovated, literally down to the studs, gut renovated and completely done, you know, to, to the standards like what we used to do, like say in Orlando, but we gut renovate something like that. Chances of those types of issues coming up are going to be a little bit less because the only issues I'm going to have is actually with inspectors as I'm waiting to get my until I'm done with the project, because I'm going to be, you know, doing complete gut renovations. I'm going to be putting in new, if I have to put new energy efficient windows in, I will. If I got to put in a new electric, you know, hot water heater, I will, because I want to take advantage of all the green um, credits that are out there. So am I going to still run into that if I'm doing a, a gut rehab for Section 8? And then you could also answer the question, Am I a complete idiot for doing a gut renovation for Section 8? You know, I don't believe in, in someone living. I, I, I believe in providing a good quality product. Uh, well, <clears throat> for like that property, right? Uh, off the top of my head, I, what did I, what's that for sale for like 60? 64.9. Yeah, you can't do, you wouldn't want to do a full-on gut rehab 
to the extent you're talking about on that property because you'd end up underwater. You'd be uh, well over uh, what it would be worth, right? But with that said, if, you, if, you're, if your goal is to do a level of rehab that is that extensive, I mean, what you wouldn't want to buy something like that. What you'd want to buy, and there's, you know, a slew uh, of properties that are going to fall into this thing. You'd be wanting to buy stuff that uh, is all fucked up and is probably only going to be running you 25K or less, 10K, 15K, 20K. So what do you model when you do, if you, if I was going to model a gut rehab, like on this particular product right here, I modeled, it's 1,596 square feet, right? So, you know, on this one, I'm saying I had modeled actually $60,000 in rehab, which is a little yeah. hot. Which is hot. Seems pretty reasonable. Somewhere about there, I would say anywhere between like a 50 to 70 K range, uh, depending on what you're dealing with, would probably get you going, which again is why you couldn't, you couldn't buy, uh, you couldn't buy a house for 65 in Youngstown and do it right. You'd need to be, you know, buying totally bombed out ones. And then you'd also need to verify that it doesn't have like any structural issue, right? If it didn't have a structural lighting, issue, you could get in there and do that, right? Yeah. So uh, you'd want to buy like, you know, totally just vacant bombed out houses. And there is, uh, there's more than enough inventory of those uh, around if you're, if you're wanting to do that level of uh, work. So let me ask you, what do you usually model out? Oh, do you guys even go that far? What do you guys model out on a rehab per square foot on a unit like that you want to just buy? and get it ready for a rent of, for like a section eight. Are you modeling $20 a foot? Are you modeling 40 a foot? What are you modeling for a rehab? We don't really operate in, in that capacity. Like we don't analyze data in that way. Okay. We don't really put like something specific on that, right? Cause like what we do specifically, right? You know, we kind of tackle, uh, you know on a project by project basis, mm -hmm. right? So everything of course is gonna be different. So. For like somebody like you, like based on what you're telling me, if you're if you're wondering like in what level would be the most uh, beneficial way for you and I to work together, right? I would say there'd probably be like two two scenarios, right? Because there's two ways I work with the with the buyers, right? And then way one would be the investment properties for sale show, which is where you saw that Parkview listing, okay? Uh, mm -hmm. and, and that's where I'm hired by somebody who owns the property, right? And then I, I go out there, I send my film career in there and I give you guys the most open, honest uh, information I can. And if you wanted to buy that property from me, uh, you wouldn't have to pay me any money or anything like that. You just submit your bids to me. Right. Uh, but then additionally, I do a personalized service, which is the MLS search and analysis show where somebody like you gives me like what you're interested in doing. So for you, it's like, yo, where are properties that I can buy for like under 20 K under 25 K that I could do a gut job rehab and then put in a section eight tenant. And then I would go out there on the market uh, and I would find them. And then I would make you a personalized video. And in that video, based on the information that I have and what I could see, I would do my best to, to lay everything out for you. Like, okay, if you're going to do that, I believe you're going to be spending roughly this amount to do this, this, and this. And then I believe that this particular property uh, would rent to a Section 8 tenant for X amount of dollars per month. And then I'd also explain to you that the seller's asking $29.9. Uh, but in my opinion, I think we probably stand a good shot of trying to get those fuckers to sell it to you for 17. And then I would act on your behalf as a broker. And likewise, if you saw a property, for instance, the park. Well, why do you have to put it? Why do you have to put it on the show? Why? Why couldn't like, like for argument six, I used to have a series of brokers, and then I used to have a team of my, like my nephew and stuff like that that would used to get up in the morning and look at multiple listings, and we just make we'd make literally 30 40 offers a day right yeah you couldn't afford to pay me that couldn't afford me bro <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea so i mean um, if you'd well, want it that would take me all day so if you'd want to pay me ten thousand dollars a day i'd work for you in but that what capacity. i'm saying is this is you know you're saying you put it on a show so you know let's just say we use the cleveland market as an example and we go into the cleveland market and i say okay Youngstown, I got a special deal in Youngstown because I'm dealing with the municipality there, right? That's fine. But I still want to use your, your knowledge in the state and stuff like that. And I say, okay, 
I'm going to come in and I'll go into Cleveland and other, uh, and, other, and other cities like that. Do I have to buy, do I have to wait for the show to come on and you to put a house on a shelf? Or do you have a division where you're like brokers and someone from my team can call up and say, hey, hey, James, you know, what's going on today? We're looking for a couple more houses. Um, what, what's on in inventory? Or is your inventory strictly what's on, on, on the TV show? Well, it's a two-part question. So the inventory that we're selling, that Holton Wise sells, right? Mm -hmm. uh, strictly the investment properties for sale show. Uh, mm -hmm. To work with me one-on-one, -on -one, no, you can't just call me up at, like every morning and be like, yo, what do you see that's out there today? The way it works is you buy packages of shows. Uh, like say you buy, you buy like 10 at a time. So you get like a 10-pack and it's, uh, it's $8.99. And then uh, I make you a video on a property but that video doesn't involve a video tour it's me going through the mls identifying a property giving you all of my insight into that property and then sending you the video just so you know though that video it doesn't get released publicly on holton wise tv uh well it does but like two years later right so it's a private video just for you um and typically uh i film those shows four days a week in a row so like uh, you know, like if, if you bought like, say, 10, you know, I could rip through 10 properties for you in a week. Uh, like every Monday I film probably like nine, 10 shows. Every Tuesday I film nine, 10 shows. Wednesday and Thursday, same thing. So I probably film like nine, 10 shows a day, four days in a row. So I could I could work through them quickly. But like I said, you no, there's unless you wanted to pay me like $10,000 a day, there's no capacity. Well, what it sounds like to me, me, 10 a week cost me $899 is the asking price per day for video, right? So if I did four videos a week, it's $3,600 a week, right? Yeah, I guess, yeah. Well, sure. you said $899, right? So it's $900, four days, $3,600. Sure. Like I said, I mean, that's the cost that's of the video. Way, so. I'm, just, I'm just trying to figure out how you operate so I can try to figure out my teaming and blend it in. You know, our goal is to, you know, crawl, walk, run. You know, when we started, uh, you know, to, when we started going, at, you know, at some point we got up to, we were doing between 40 and 50 acquisitions a month. You know, that's, that's, that's what we were doing. So yeah, sure. I'm not going to say that's going to happen right away in Youngstown because I got to get, you know, you got to get the lay of land. You got to start, you make a couple of mistakes here and there. You start building it. Um, but let's talk property management. Let's talk some impression. What's property management going to run me in the Cleveland area if if uh, Holton Wise is doing it? Well, we have the whole contract uh, on the facts, so I would implore you to read that, of course. But generally speaking, the where's the contract? It's on the FAC on our website, the whole contract. So you could actually uh, uh -huh. review the entire contract. But generally speaking, like the key points, the highlights, the things that most folks typically are asking about would be a uh, monthly fee would be 10% of the rent, or if the unit's vacant, it's 75 bucks a unit. Uh, leasing is one month's rent uh, or 750 a unit. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then uh, what else? Uh, all right, so that's there. So you're at 10%. Um, that I got my turnovers that I that I assessed. All right, and then uh, Cleveland areas. How do we work with contractors? Uh, well, in Cleveland, Holton Wise, we're a contracting company, so we do it all. But if you want to work with other contractors, you totally can. Okay, so, so, but you guys got a crew. That if in Cleveland, I said that, let's just say in Cleveland, we say, okay, we're going to do, we'll start off, we'll do, you know, one a week or two a week or something like that. That's something you guys can easily handle, it sounds like. Oh, yeah, definitely. So uh, we actually have on our fact, like videos that will actually go through like our timelines and like how we charge you, things like that. So like you go through the fact and there's like kind of videos that answer all the questions. But yeah, we're full service in like Cleveland, Akron, Canton, Lorraine, Elyria. All those cities, uh, we could do everything. But it's a la carte. So, like, if you just wanted to buy stuff and you built up your own team and you wanted to use your own team, like, after the sale, that's totally fine with us, too. 
like I said, it's it's literally as much as you want or as little as you want. Will you guys do a cost plus uh, uh, job? Uh, so we're like the the contractor, so we'll bid it per job, and obviously there's a profit margin in there. And right, so if I deliver you all of the materials, oh no 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 we don't do that no. No. So you want to buy all the materials. We buy all the materials. We supply everything. So it's like, yo, I want to renovate this house. We'll be like, all right, cool, no problem. Here's the scope of work. Here's the line by line bid. This is it. And if you're like, oh, I think I could get somebody to do that for like four thousand dollars cheaper, we're like, peace. You enjoy that. That's awesome, bro. Uh, there's not gonna be any negotiations. Like that's gonna be the price. And it's like, you want us to do the job? We do the job. You don't. You don't. Yeah. Um, all right. I just got to run that by my team because, you know, we just did a little differently. We used to we used to deliver all the materials to the job site. And then we you know, we knew how much it cost to put the house together. And we made sure that we covered, you know, the job where the guy who owns a business in this example, James White's, after he paid everyone off and did everything, made himself a nice profit. We, you know, we, we knew that we had it. We know what a local guy gets, you know charges to paint the wall and all that. But we, we did a little different, but in this market, maybe I'll, I'll try something different. But we, yeah, I mean, it's up to you, bro. If you want to operate that way, that's great. We implore you to do it, uh, you know, but if it doesn't work for you, we're here to assist. But yeah, the way we operate, yeah, we, we don't deviate from how we operate. Okay, well, listen, I respect that because I didn't deviate the way from the way I operated down there. You know, it was, you know, it, it was tough in the beginning to get a contract that would do a $20,000 rehab because it, to them, it didn't excite him. But when I told him I was going to give him, you know, a couple of hundred of them a year, now all of a sudden his ears perk up. Yeah, I would recommend uh, if you're interviewing contractors and talking to contractors in Cleveland, you don't say that. Well, uh, I'm not, I, haven't I, yeah. I haven't talked to anybody. I'm talking to you first. Yeah, I would say, well, my advice to you would be don't fucking say that. Uh, because eh, pretty much everyone's just going to blow you off after that. Mm -hmm. uh, so you got to understand in this particular market, now I'm probably the most well-known person. Uh, we get, you know, folks from out of state uh, who've never done a deal in Cleveland or, you know, any of these small <laughs> distressed Midwest areas. And, and, and in having doing over $200 million worth of transactions, uh, you know, with an average like price of like fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 a house. So you could tell how many, you know, houses I've moved. Uh, everybody that comes in who's never done a transaction that says, oh, I'm going to do 100, like 99% of the time they don't resolve my resume, any deals. Yeah, but un un unlike everyone else, my resume shows. I mean, yeah, but th that's got... cool. That's, hey, look, brother, here's the deal. You don't have to prove anything to me. No, I know. You know, I, I charge everybody up front. So, like, we can talk about whatever the fuck you want. It's all good. You're getting an hour of my time regardless. But what I'm telling you, uh, like, if you're dealing with these other contractors and you're trying to get the guys that are going to work for you for rates that are much lower than, like, my company would work for you, if you say that kind of stuff to them, it's, most of these people are going to be turned off by you. No, no, no. I'm not. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The one thing I don't do, I'm not, I'm not, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't pay people cheap rates. I pay more, good market value. But what I want is the only thing I want is if a contractor says to me he's going in on August 1st and he'll be done by September 5th, he's got to be done by September 5th. And I'll reward the guy for being done early. Yeah. So I, I, I have no problems. I'm not looking. I don't chint when it comes to that stuff. That's a for like, OK, there's I just, I just what I'm trying to Im impress upon you and explain to you is there are. A lot of people coming from out of state who want to accomplish those goals, the same goals as you. And Cleveland is a very, very tough market uh, for out of state investors to accomplish those goals, as is Youngtown, as is Toledo's. Hiring contractors uh, that are consistent and legitimate is very, very tough. And if, if you come out and you say things like, oh, I'm going to do 400. Thinking their ears are going to perk up. I'm telling you, in this market, it's actually going to have the opposite effect for you. So I'm trying to help you. I, yeah, I, I, know, I, I know that yeah. I know the animal I'm dealing. I get you. I respect yeah. you. Thank you. I appreciate that. You yeah. know what? I'm saying this to you. Sure. But you know, there's you know, there's contractors where listen. A lot of people in this world, money doesn't excite people. 
I would agree with that. Yeah. Money doesn't excite people. You know, I'm a respectful guy. I treat all my contractors, my employees, everyone with respect. All I expect is respect back. If a contractor says to me, I'm going to finish something by X amount of days, I, I, I that's what I the count on. I can model around that. If I got a contractor that says it's going to take me 60 days, then I'll model around it. I don't, I don't have a problem. All I want is good, quality, honest contractors. That's all I want. Yeah, and what I'm, I'm just again. I've tried to tell you is that is going to be a tough hurdle in this. All right. So that's okay. Hurdle. So I'm trying to explain that to you. So remember when I saw, told you I sold $200 million worth of real estate and the houses are usually like 50 grand, right? And you see my show and you see all those houses that we're selling in Youngstown and Toledo and Cleveland and Akron. Like a lot of those houses are for guys that were in your position that thought they could get quality contracting and for whatever reason, it didn't work out good for them and they got burned and then they call me and then I sell their house. So you got a one-on-one -on -one video with me and I feel that it is my value to you to explain to you the type of hurdles you'll deal with. So it's a tough labor market. Contracting is very tough out here. So it's not going to be like it was in Florida, which I feel like the labor market out there is a, a little bit uh, more friendly and easier to navigate. Uh, it's tough. It out was, here. It I just want to impress that upon you. It's tough. It, it was it's tough. Very it was tough here. Yeah, it's very tough here. Yeah. So that, that's just what I want you to know. I want you to plan for that. Yeah, when my partners got started in, you know, six, seven, and eight, oh, six, oh, seven, oh, eight, man, it was impossible to get people. It was really tough. It, it takes a while. It takes a while to build trust and build that that relationship. It, it, look, it's not. It's probably going to take me more than a year. I know that. Okay, good. Yeah, good. It's I would say that's accurate. Yeah, listen, I'm going to make. Listen, we're going to make mistakes along the way, but the mistakes are going to be accounted for on my model because instead of instead of me doing a turnover or doing something where I say 90 days. I'm going to say it's 180 days. You know, I'm going to give myself 180 days from when I close on a property to literally get it rehab, get it stabilized, get a tenant in there, do the process. Along the way, you sound like to me, you said to me, the way it sounded like with the Section 8, it looks like I'm going to need to have an employee or two that just manage that. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it sounds like to me. I mean, these are the things that I'm learning, and I appreciate you telling me this because, you know, we, we, you know, we just did it in a different way, but boiled down to it's not a different way. It's just regimented. As long as I know that, you know, you guide me, you tell me these are going to be the, the, the issues, I'll, I'll know. You know, it's – I'm managing – the, Yeah, once you get the system down, like I said, the system – once you get the system down – is fine. And that's why I, I try to really poke holes in people's plans and explain to them where, how they think it's going to work might differ from how it really works. I mean, we do this stuff every day mm -hmm. and uh, you know, just so long as like, you, you know, it's coming. <laughs> like when you have your unit, it's rent ready. You think it's perfect. And then you get the section eight investor and then he gives you two ticky tech violations. So then it takes you four weeks to fix them and have him come back out there. And then you're like, all right, I'll be good now. And then it's a different guy and he just gives you something totally different. But if you know that's coming every time, it's all good. But I just, most people, when they get that for the first time, they're like, oh, what the fuck? And they freak out, right? So just, you know, as long as you know that that kind of stuff's coming and you model for it, you'll be fine. Like Listen, we do it we every live, day. We look, I'm from, I live in Jersey now. I have okay. a, I, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a contractor. But I have fam my entire family is all contractors and my father-in-law and my wife. And we see it all the time. You know, inspectors come in, you're, you're building a new house. They come in and all of a sudden they change their mind. They're like, at the yep, yep, exactly. You know, like, oh, wait, why did you, you tell, why did you put this sheetrock up? I didn't finish with the electrical inspector. But you told me here, your, your partner told me we could when we were done. Oh, no, that was him, not me. You know, we get that all the time. I guess. Yeah. It. So, yeah, that's what you'll deal with. Uh, okay. A couple, of, couple of other things, too. Like a big a big thing, right? Because um, you've talked about Tule or you've talked about Cleveland, and then we've been bouncing back and forth talking about Cleveland, talking about Youngstown, Cleveland, Youngstown. For you, one thing you should keep an eye out for 
uh, in Cleveland versus Youngstown because you're going to get similar pricing, probably a little mm-hmm. cheaper. Probably a little cheaper in Youngstown than you will in Cleveland. Rents will be similar, maybe slightly lower in Youngstown than Cleveland. Uh, the types of tenant bases you're going to be able to operate in and like these like CD type neighborhoods, they'll, they'll be very similar, right? So all that stuff is going to be six to one, half dozen of the other. But one major thing you should probably be on the lookout for if you're determining where you want to go is Cleveland has new lead certification laws. Uh, yeah, for I, saw that on, I yeah. saw that on one of your sites. Yeah, and we did like a half hour video that explains it. Youngstown does not have that right now. So your cost to rehab your properties uh, will be cheaper in Youngstown. You'll probably be dealing with less city red tape. I happen to know too that they have a pretty decent shortage of uh, Section 8 housing in Youngstown. So like if you're looking at these two markets, a lot of stuff is going to be similar and a lot of profits and losses are going to be determined by like what you buy in the neighborhood, how much you buy it for, how you operate your business. But mm-hmm. like two, two contrasting things you'll see with those two markets is I believe you'll have less red tape and less pushback from the government uh, in Youngstown. So uh, I, that's something to keep in mind. And I think you'll be able to do your work cheaper in Youngstown as well. well that, that was one of the things is we've already had that conversation with, yeah. with, with the government. Um, you know, it was brought to us by another hedge fund. They're the ones that got us into, into this project. We, I was not, Youngstown and, and Ohio and Cleveland were not on my radar. Um, you know, we were actually working on a, solar panel manufacturing facility here in the United States. And we were doing a financing. We went to a green hedge fund and this green hedge fund started talking to us and they were interested in that project. But then they, they realized what I had done in the past with that company that I had. And they were like, Hey, there's an opportunity in Youngstown. You want, you want to help us? We don't know that. We don't know how to do that SFR. We don't know how to do that. And you've done it in the past. So, you know, I put two and two together. They, you know, put me in it. And, you know, I've been doing the research. You guys came up, you know. I was, uh, you know, your show is pretty neat. You know, I, you know, I laughed at some of this stuff, you know, in a good way. You know, I, you know, everything from the evictions, because we lived it. You know, we we lived all of that stuff. You know? We lived the evictions. We lived, you know, the keys to cash. My buddy did it. Um, so it looks like I am going to be committed into into the Youngstown area, but if I'm going to be admitted into the Youngstown area, I might as well go into the Cleveland area as well, because I have friends who literally live here and they drive back and forth to Cleveland every week. And you know, my buddies started off with one or two houses, up to like 33 houses in Cleveland. Oh, nice. You know, and that's what he does. And he does it all, you know, goes back and forth himself all the time. He's down, he's got a presence and, you know, he does some of the work himself, which is, you know, nuts, but he does it. And, any high local guys. So, you know, Cleveland definitely will be on my radar. Um, I would love to work with you guys in, in, in the future. Um, you know, I will definitely use you in, in the areas that you can do uh, property management. I'll use you guys because I'd be a fool not to. Um, I'll use you guys for property management and I'll use you guys for, for contracting. If you do happen to know a couple of names that you can email me, as far as property management people in Youngstown, that would be great. Um, you know, I can always, you know, start in- inquiring with some of my old hedge fund friends or people like that who know someone, you know. But uh, my my challenge in Youngstown is going to be the property management. Well, not the only challenges. And um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need to have, you know, full walk run with contractors. Yeah, I would say that's accurate too. And then just one thing to look out for. Uh, but I mean, I'm I'm sure you're savvy enough to be able to do that with some Google searches. But just you know, pay attention to uh, the overall value of the neighborhoods because a lot of these neighborhoods, and you're not going to see it. You're mm-hmm. not going to see it in Jersey, right? You're not going to like be all into a house for 80k in Jersey and actually be underwater of like what the rest of the stuff in the neighborhood is, right? You just gotta remember there's gonna be a very low ceiling on values in a lot of these neighborhoods that you know will be much lower than what you're used to seeing out there in jersey so you just gotta pay attention to that right like it's like back to the park view one right you can't you can't be 120k what's up we do have boots on the ground 
So, yeah. it, you know, but that, right now, yeah, that's just a lot of data, though, right? Just understanding the data, like seeing what no, all no, 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 no. you know, go no, no. for. We, we, we bought a headquarters down there, and there's people that are going to be living down there that work for our team. So it's not going to be like we're just going to be investors sitting over here in New Jersey or in New York. Um, we will have our own team. We will have employees down there. There's, there's, there's already three already that are on the ground there. Yeah, perfect. So I, I would just be wary of that, though, right? Yeah. Just to make sure you're getting it for cheap enough, right? Because like with the, the park view example, right? It'd be super easy to be underwater on that one. Yeah, yeah. That's just that's just my main thought. So what? Do you, let me ask you something. As an example on park view, I, I really, I looked at the video. What would you spend in rehab on a place like that? Uh, well, I don't have like that particular property like off the top of my head memorized. Huh. I'm pretty sure like in the video, I would have went through what I would have done. So yeah, I, I, you said you said you you touched on it, but this one when I, it was a, it was a three bedroom and two bedroom, and then this one had like a separate house in the back that was like a little one bedroom, and I think combined all three units are like fifteen right on the sixteen hundred square feet. Yeah, so like whatever I would have said in the video, that'd be my thought, right? Like mm. I, go, I go through too many properties uh, on a daily and weekly basis to have any idea, like without. Watching mm -hmm. the video right now, like what's going on with that property individually. Uh, but like that's why in every video I try to give people like a an example of what I would have did. So I would just refer back to the video because oh, I remember it wasn't a gut job rehab or anything of that nature. But I don't remember exactly. No, I wanna, this this will need to work. So let's go back to Cleveland a second. So when you're doing things in your mind, when you're putting together property and you present it to an investor, what is it that you look at for? Let's start off on a cash on cash return. Like what type of cap rates do you envision or most of your investors look for in the Cleveland area? Or what are the realistic numbers for cash on cash? And then I know how to use leverage from there. Well, I mean, that again, that's something that's going to vary. And we're going to base, like, I think there's two different, like, questions or schools of thought there like mm -hmm. you have to balance some things right like you be like yo i want to hit these numbers right so you'd be like okay these are the kind of numbers i want to hit right no, but then, i'm gonna blend them i gotta blend them i know yeah then there's what the market is producing so you're like yo these this is this is what i want to do bro and i'll take, take that information from you and i'll be like okay bro how about this particular property this is how it would play out. This would be the closest to what you're you're into, right? And a lot of a lot of that stuff too is going over different asset classes with people, right? Because people will give me like their their on paper projections and their numbers, and they'll be like, "But I also want to be in like a B grade neighborhood." And I'd be like, "Okay, well, to actually find yourself a property that you can generate that rent for that little of a price." You're actually going to be something like this. And just so you know, this is how it all play out. And this is like a D or an F grade neighborhood. So it's up to you if you want, if you want to make the move. Right. So it's, you know, I can't make shit appear on the market. That's not there. Right. No, it's no, I know, really I know. about uh, just like you tell me what you want. And I show you what the closest thing that's available to that is. Or at the same time, I'll show you a property. I'm like, you know, this is like the exact kind of property you want, but the seller or they want 120k. If you want to have your numbers uh, work the way you want it, you'd have to offer them 90. If you want me to present the offer to them for 90, I will. Uh, but and then I'll give you my assessment of how likely it is I, I to accept it. your offer. I'm just wondering what like an average rate is on you know on you know C and D neighborhoods because if we're talking Section Eight, you know we're not talking you know you know the, the you know the A's and B's. Yeah, like if you're in a Section 8 neighborhood, I mean, it, Section 8 in Cleveland, like you could be all in for something that's, uh, you know, acquisition, rehab, got it Section 8 approved. You're going to be all in for like 80 or less usually, and you're going to be able to generate 11, 1200 in rent on a single family. And if you're uh, doing a duplex deal, you know, most of the duplexes out here are going to be two bed, one bath. You're going to be in the sixteen to eighteen hundred dollar a month uh, rent range, and you could be all in for anywhere between like ninety and one hundred twenty k, depending on what neighborhood in Cleveland you buy it in. All right, all right. I could run, I could run numbers on you know just assessments like that, but yeah, um, you know, for the most part is, 
you know, I, I, I'm going to get it. I, 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 it's like, not that I have a choice, but what I've been presented, what I will be in, in Youngstown. So anything and everything that you get in Youngstown, when we start talking, I'll, I'll take a look at everything in Youngstown. And then what I'll do is I'll also start looking at other areas that you guys service. I'll look at the Cleveland area. <clears throat> I don't mind me being in the Cleveland area at all. Um, yeah, I mean, that works for me, bro. Like I said, uh, I'm an open book, so, you yeah, know, whatever so, you want to so, do. So, so wait. So wait. I mean, uh, you know, let's see. You know, there's, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of depressed areas in Youngstown right now in that whole area. Um, oh, absolutely, for sure. And there's a lot, listen, and Section 8 is only getting bigger in the country because more and more people are qualifying or getting vouchers now. Well, like I said, they have they have a shortage. They have a shortage of uh, of Section Eight housing in Youngstown specifically. Mm -hmm. So, like, you should be able to get quite a bit of rents, uh, and you should be able to have like a line of tenants. And likewise, like for you, you want to do like a full gut jab rehab, which would be something that's different than probably like ninety nine percent of the landlords out there are doing yeah. when they acquire a property. So, for you, like being in Youngstown with like the prices that they are, like you got to focus on stuff that you could acquire for under twenty five k. Hey, can I just can I just put you on a quick hold for like 32 seconds? Something just came up. Yeah, sure. We're almost done, I know. Still all good on my end. All right, cool. I apologize for that. Oh, I mean, no worries, bro. Someone just came in and I had a... Uh, so, what's the process if uh, for Cleveland? Let's start off with Cleveland. To uh, I see something on your site. You put it up. I'm interested. Uh, give me the process. Send me an email. Hey, man, I saw the property, 123 Main Street. I'm interested in buying it. I want to offer 90K. I'll pay cash, contingent on inspection. Here's my proof of funds. And then I'll take that, talk to the seller. If the seller agrees, uh, I'll drop the contract. If the seller doesn't agree, I'll tell you they don't agree. And if they counter, I'll tell you the counter. And then we just work it back and forth. All right. So let's use an example of Cleveland property. You show me Cleveland property, it's X amount, but we know we have to rehab it, right? Uh, in order for me to to say, yeah, I want to buy this property, I also have to have an idea what this is going to cost me. Is this? Do I got to give you a deposit for the property, and then we talk about that? How do you, how do we address that issue? Uh, how much this rehab going to cost me, so I know my all in price, and then well, I can make an assessment. Like I said, with the investment properties for sale show. Uh... I give my general thoughts on how much it'll be. If it's a property that like we're already managing, oftentimes, sometimes in those shows, you'll actually see the show come out uh, with an actual line by line bid from Holton Wise. So, um, you know, whether it be one where we got a line by line bid, you actually see the bid and then you'll know what our bid's going to be. Uh, you already have it. Otherwise, you just have to go off of like my wide ranging uh, estimate. And then if you go under contract, you could then get an inspection. Third party inspector could come in, can kind of narrow down the openness of that bid. All right. So, so in general, I, and I, and I apologize, James, but I, I didn't sit and watch all your videos and all of that stuff. 
I watched a couple of them that came across them recently. I've been getting some emails. So I've watched that. So I haven't, to the extent, I have not watched them all. So if, yeah, you sure, say, cool. if you're saying that they're on there, then I can make my assessment and then I can come back and make an offer. Yeah, but like I said, it's everything's going to vary, right? It's going to vary by property, right? Yeah, no, so of course, of course. If I'm not, if we're not managing the property, uh, you know, you'll get my my wide estimate, and I just it's really on an individualized basis. And I try, I just my my thing is I give people everything I have information wise on that property in that video because like I'm not I do so so many properties come through my my desk every day, and I have a whole team of filmers that go out and stuff. So like you can't just be like, yo, this property and I have it in my memory, right? Like I'll have, to, I would have to go back to a video to actually remember what's going on with that property. So I give it all, everything I have in that video. So it's going to be different, right? Sometimes I have more info and it's something we manage and we already went and did a line by line bid for the seller, right? Mm -hmm. And then the seller's like, oh, I don't want to do that. Let's just sell it. And all the info's there. Other times there'll be less info. And then you got to take uh, what I got. And then it's up to you if you want to move forward and you make your offers like i always recommend people always make their offers contingent on their own third party inspection and uh mm -hmm. you know from there we have more info yeah most of the offers are going to be you know you know cash 30 day close and then we go from there why is it gotta be 30 day close of his cash why so long because i i want to that's how i've done it in the past i mean if you tell me i can do it quicker we we can yeah i mean for cash offers out here you know, usually like 10, 10, 14 days. Really? It's like a vacant property, you know, usually it's like, hey, man, it's vacant. Usually like a three-day inspection period. After that, you get three days to think it over. Okay, so you, I, I appreciate it. See, I didn't know that, you know. Yeah. You you try to do a cash offer at 30 days. Everyone's going to wonder what the fuck's going on. Like, okay. where's it coming from? So we used to do 30 days. We used to do 30 day closings, right? And then what we do is I used to send in the old days or oh, back to well, the old days a couple of you know, years ago. And we would just basically send between the day we made the offer and the day we made the close, we would have the contractors go in, everything. We'd have the scope of work. And then we'd have the material there, you know, on the closing day. But, you know, if you're telling me I can close in 10 to 14 days, it's, that's yeah, I mean, if we got a vacant property too, there's no reason you can't bring your uh, contractor to walk the property uh, prior to the. Uh, well, I don't need my contractor to walk the property because if it's in Cleveland, I'm I'm relying on you. Well, sometimes, like I said, if it's if it's the property we're managing, you'll get the line by line bid. But then sometimes I give you like a more open, open ended quote. Mm -hmm. So. I mean, it's up to you. You could do as much or as little due diligence as you want, dog. I always, I always tell people to do as much as possible. Uh, yeah. But like, you'll see that every video, every particular property, uh, for a myriad of factors, uh, is, is going to be presented in a slightly different way, and that's based on you know who owns it, the person. I mean, I don't like you're a business guy. I'm a business guy. Mm -hmm. Every one of these properties that end up on my show is not necessarily going to be owned by a business guy. Right. Like sometimes, you know, these sellers, they're not as sophisticated as uh, you would like. So, you know, there's going to be varying levels of hurdles uh, that are going to be available at every point in deal. And I do my best to to provide people an open example of like what we got. James, if I'm going to get if I'm going to commit to working with you and working with your organization in Cleveland, then I'm going to commit to you and let you do the all the contracting and let you do it all. And it's just a function of. How we perform together, you know, that's that's what it really boils down to is can you coexist with me? Can I coexist with you? You know, you sound like a guy that, you know, you know, bullshit and same with me, you know, it's with no bullshit. So it would be great. You know, show, and, show man. Yeah. So, you know, I, I'm going to enter the market. Um, I will be probably in Youngston. The next two weeks, Mac. Um, I won't be in Cleveland. You guys aren't based in Cleveland. You're outside of Cleveland, right? I mean, like, uh, we have a couple offices, but like one is literally, it's on the, there's a suburb called Parma. It's across the street. So yeah, we're based in Cleveland, I guess you could say, if right. that would be the easiest way to put it. Like on one side of Brook Park Road, it's Parma. On the other side, it's Cleveland. So, uh, you know, I, I have made commitments already to the town. I'm going to do that, but Cleveland, Akron, you know, things that you're, you're really good. I'll start to, I'll start to dabble. I'll go and, 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 you know, build a, you know, a portfolio there too. I mean, uh, I'm agnostic. It doesn't matter to me. I'm a numbers guy. It's basically, you show me a house, 
you, sh we tell, you tell me a person is we can put this person in there. This is what we're going to get. This is what it's going to cost us. This is what the return is. I, I run, you know, we, we, you know, we do it everything. We buy for cash. And then after it's stabilized, we go out and, you know, finance it out and wash, rinse, repeat, wash, rinse, repeat, wash, rinse, repeat. That's, that's, there's no fine to it. All right, brother. Sounds good. Well, we look forward to hearing from you. We'll keep an uh, eye out there for some offers coming on stuff from the Investment Properties for Sale show. Or if you want uh, to work on a more one-on-one -on -one personalized basis, we'll uh, you know send you a link to the MLS Search and Analysis show where we could work together one-on-one. -on -one. Maybe you get yourself a 10-pack to start, and then uh, we'll continue the process from there. All right. Tell them to send me that link and whoever works with you, and let's go from there. Thank All you. right, brother. Take Thanks care. For the time. I appreciate the time. Yes, sir. Bye. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.